I love myself a very straightforward cocktail in name and recipe. So today we're going to talk about one of the most straightforwardly named cocktails that has the most roundabout reason for existing. <laughs> the Bacardi Cocktail on today's episode of Mike's Hard Reviews. Hey there, the ho there. My name is Michael. Welcome back to Mike's Hard Reviews. I am a bartender and a home mixologist from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And today I want to share with you guys a pre-prohibition era cocktail that uh, is one of very few actually that has a reason for being copywritten. So the year is 1913. There is a newspaper called the Oakland Tribune. And in it, there is an article written about a new cocktail coming out of New York, New Jersey that features rum, lime juice, and grenadine. Now, it does not have a name at this time, but it's hearkened to as one of the newfangled creations of the uh, city life, the world of city life, I guess. And uh, it's touted as amazing. And while it doesn't have a name yet, it would very quickly receive one as the Bacardi cocktail in 1914's Jacques Straub released cocktail book called Drinks. I could have said that better. What I'm saying is that in 1913, the Oakland Tribune talks about this new recipe that is sweeping through city bars in New York and New Jersey. Uh, and that is labeled as the Bacardi cocktail in 1914's Drinks by Jacques Straub. It's a combination of a Puerto Rican rum, or a sort of more mild rum, mild and typically unaged rum, lime juice, and grenadine, sort of as a play off of a daiquiri. And it is wildly popular everywhere you go. Prior to Prohibition, this is a super popular cocktail that everybody seems to not really be able to get enough of. Now, through Prohibition, that actually stays the same. The popularity of the Bacardi cocktail is unmoving, and as drier shores become the commonplace issue in America, people move to places like Puerto Rico and Cuba to drink. And when they're in Puerto Rico, they encounter Bacardi, which is Bacardi rum. And as a result, the Bacardi cocktail gets made with Bacardi for real, actually, and <laughs> it's a really fucking weird set of circumstances. <laughs> So throughout Prohibition, people are going to Puerto Rico and drinking Bacardi cocktails with Bacardi in them. When Prohibition ends in the United States, they come back and they continue to drink these Bacardi cocktails here in America. And people stop using Bacardi because, frankly, there are nicer rums out there. As a result, though, in around 1936, Bacardi catches wind of this and because people in various bars are destroying their market share by not serving Bacardi cocktails with Bacardi in them, they sue multiple New York bars. <laughs> uh, and this actually is the reason why the Bacardi cocktail now must be made with Bacardi because in 1936, I think, I think this started, this process starts in the 19, early 1930s, but in 36, the lawsuit is decided that a Bacardi cocktail must be made with Bacardi because even though the judge didn't know what made Bacardi different from other rums, he was convinced enough that they, it was a unique rum <laughs> to, to require its use in the cop. It's fucking stupid. The Bacardi cocktail becomes a copywritten uh, drink that has to use Bacardi rum. And uh, from that point on, sort of fading out with the times and not really surviving the dark ages of cocktails, becomes less popular compared to its older brother, the daiquiri. It's a very, very simple cocktail that is a variation on a time-tested platform, sweetener, spirit, sour, and frankly, I'm actually kind of excited to try one because I haven't yet. Now, this cocktail does require a single special ingredient, and that's going to be in the form of grenadine. We've talked about grenadine a couple different times before. It is a pomegranate syrup, essentially a simple syrup made uh, using pomegranate juice in place of water. This one in particular is a two to one because you should always make your syrups two to one. Compared to simple syrup, which is just flat, you know, regular sweetness, a grenadine is going to add not only a nice tinge of red color, but also a sort of dark, savory, rich, and borderline, I, I, maybe not herbaceous, but a sort of complexity to your cocktail that was absent before. It plays well with really any kind of citrus, uh, and as a result, um, you can put it in most things as a substitute for simple syrup and have a pretty good time. Now, because of that, I'm actually very excited to try this cocktail, but I also 
wanted to take the opportunity to try a new rum. I am, I am actually a bit of a bit of a rum a rum nerd. Not like a crazy crazy rum nerd, but I do like my rum. And because Bacardi cocktails need to be made with Bacardi to be called a Bacardi cocktail, I decided to follow the instruction of liquor.com from where our recipe today comes and try a fancier rum. Bacardi has an eight-year-old varietal of their gold rums called Bacardi Ocho, which is specifically listed in the recipe on liquor.com. And I have actually never had it before. So I decided I might as well bite the bullet and jump ship and give it a shot. So let's give ourselves a tasting of Bacardi Ocho before we make our cocktail. In general, I don't know how I feel about the notion of uh, requiring a certain kind of rum in cocktails like this. I think it's unnecessary. And there are definitely nicer rums than Bacardi out there, but something like Bacardi Ocho actually does give the cocktail a reason to lean into Bacardi specifically, because this is a rum that's gonna have eight years worth of aging and the character that that provides. I think there's gonna be a reason for this actually existing. And quick cork test. Oh shit. It's, damn, okay, Bacardi. Wow, passed the cork test with flying colors. We give ourselves just a gentle, a gentle but goodly pour of our Bacardi Ocho. Let's go ahead and give our uh, Bacardi a quick nose. Oh wow, okay. So yeah, a, a, a reasonably reasonably pronounced sort of molasses type character from from in the base of of the uh, of the rum itself. Oak barrel aged notes, sort of uh, honey and, and a light shardness to it. There is a pretty strong ethanol nose here um, compared to some other rums, like, uh, like for example, Appleton Estate Signature. It's a Jamaican rum, so it's got a different character to it, but it, it doesn't really have that strong and alcoholic presence. This feels, this, fe this feels a little bit more heavy on that kind of acetone sort of note. Let's give it a taste. Okay. I actually like that a lot. That's pretty fantastic. It's very smooth uh, and mild. And when I mean smooth, I mean it's got that kind of very gentle rum funkiness to it. That's sort of character of what rum is without being abrasive. It's approachable. It's kind of lightly sweet. It does feel, yeah, it does feel maybe lightly sweetened on the back end, but there does there is this kind of natural woody sweetness to it too, because it's, I mean, it's eight years old. It's an eight year old age rum. It's gonna have some of that going on in there. I think this is actually a halfway, a halfway decent rum. This is actually pretty good. And I can tell that it's rum. Something like Bacardi Superior, their traditional unaged white rum, is a little bit more devoid of character, um, even in the even in the sense of it being a rum. Um, not absent of that, but you know, a lot less noticeable. Um, so this is actually actually a pretty good product. I would I would I would stand by this. I think this is pretty good. So let's go ahead and set that aside and make ourselves a Bacardi cocktail with Bacardi Ocho. To start, I'm gonna grab our grenadine and we'll begin by measuring and pouring in three quarters of an ounce. Any cocktail that relies on uh, grenadine in its entirety for its sweet component should definitely be made with a proper grenadine, meaning you're gonna to have to make it yourself. Reaching for something like ro roses here or really anywhere is not an advisable decision. Next up, we're gonna need some lime juice. We'll come behind our, our grenadine with one full ounce of freshly squeezed lime juice. And finally, for our rum component, we're gonna grab that Bacardi Ocho and pour in a goodly two ounces. I think there's an additional advantage here to using an aged rum compared to a white rum. Ignore that. I think there's a good reason for using an aged rum here, not just for the additional character it's gonna provide, which I think is gonna complement both the lime and the grenadine itself and those flavors that those things bring, but also because there's this kind of Odd thing I've noticed where a lot of grenadine based cocktails come out very, very red without using Rose's grenadine, like they're using real grenadine. And I've never gotten that, but the dark color of an aged rum would help support that. So we might actually get that today. We'll come behind our ingredients with two cubes of ice, one whole and one cracked. We will cap that up, tap that down, and give that a shake for 10 to 12 seconds to combine. Gonna grab some stemware to serve this up in. I think a more wide bold coupe, like a uh, neck and nora glass is gonna be, you know, just fine here, but I'm gonna use something a little bit more stout. Uncap our cocktail and go ahead and double strain that into our glass. I was hopeful for a bright red. At least I got 
muddy bread. That works. <laughs> For a garnish, I'm gonna go ahead and grab fresh lime here and cut myself just a reasonably sized wheel and perch that up on the lip like so. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the ever famous Bacardi cocktail. Alrighty, with our station cleaned up, let's go ahead and give our uh, muddy brown Bacardi cocktail a sip. Cheers. Mm, oh. Okay. Okay, okay, you're onto something, okay. <laughs> it's got that same gentle rum character that a cocktail made with Bacardi would have. It's got this sort of just nice gentle rolling, but kind of full bodied presence to it that I think is kind of accentuated by the additional age that Bacardi Ocho has and is giving it this kind of nice vanilla note alongside that, which comes from, you know, barrel aging. That alongside the acidity and the flavor of the lime and this really deep, savory, rich red berry character from the grenadine, Wow, is that good. I see why the folks at liquor.com went for Bacardi Ocho, because it really does take the concept of a daiquiri and flip it around a little bit into something closer to like a whiskey sour, where you've got that kind of rich, you know, oak tannin character accompanying the flavor of your spirit. And it really does give it an additional dimension that for sure is a, is a positive thing here, no doubt. It's got the same zestiness of a daiquiri, though less intensely so. I think um, the aging on the rum is kind of helping contribute to moderating the sort of brightness of, of the lime, which is maybe not a, the most positive thing here, but it is definitely, definitely a thing happening, that's for sure. It's, it's, it's really, really impressive, actually. It, it gives me the impression of hey, we've got this new ingredient, kind of like how like a bee's knees does actually, we've got this new ingredient we're trying to work with, you know, in, in that case, honey syrup, in this case, grenadine, and we're just gonna take the thing that we love already and add it to it and boom, we've got a thing that works super well. But that's the Bacardi cocktail, a Prohibition classic that um, I think actually should come back. That's that's a lot of fun. That's, that's like a really easy, really, really easy sipper, um, which, you know, Daiquiris in the classic style are not unapproachable, but they are less approachable than like a frozen daiquiri. Something like this, if you wanted to introduce somebody to the idea of the traditional preparation of a daiquiri, who's not normally used to it and isn't really a fan of very proof forward drinks, this is a great way to do it. Cause that, that is, that is dangerous, frankly. It is so, so good. <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of our episode, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for watching. We're going to go ahead and do a reading from Crisp Toasts by William Evans and Andrew Frothingham. I almost always, almost always put their last names in the wrong place. We were reading from the section on adolescence, and uh, our toast today from that section goes as such. To our adolescent friends, may their characters grow as fast as their bodies. Cheers. I don't know about y'all. Purity did me a couple favors, so I feel that one, personally. I'm mildly attacked when I say that, but I feel it, is the point. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching again. Uh, this is the next news episode of Mike's Heart Reviews. Sorry we missed last week, but hey, we're back, and I said we would be back, and we got a double, double header this week, so be stay tuned this Tuesday for our second upload of the show on yet another cocktail featuring grenadine, one that I'm actually even more excited for now that I've tried this, because wow, this was good. <laughs> If you like the video, click that like button and subscribe down below and click the bell to be notified whenever uploads come up. Um, occasionally, I upload shorts and I'm actually gonna start doing that a little bit more often. So if you want quicker, shorter form content versions of the show, that would be a phenomenal way to get that. <laughs> you can also follow me on my socials, which are either on the screen now or appeared a little bit earlier. I don't really use any of them. I'm really just here on YouTube. So if you wanna just hang out, you can. But for the most part, I'm on, you know, Instagram and TikTok, second to YouTube. So. Follow me there if you want. I don't know. I don't care. I don't give a shit. Do what you want. You're an adult. You can do what you want. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode. Please remember to drink responsibly and have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye.